Hello everyone and welcome back to Power Electronics Lectures. Today I'm gonna talk about the isolated back boost converter or what we call the flyback converter. As an introduction to the flyback converter or the isolated DC to DC converters in general, we said that uh, within the DC to DC converter, we need to find the AC waveform that is existed uh, within the DC to DC converter. And we said that if you look at the inductor in general, we found that uh, this inductor has an AC waveform, which is the voltage uh, applied on this inductor. Because of the balanced condition within the DC to DC converter, we agreed that this AC waveform average voltage must be equal to zero, which means that the positive side of this waveform must be equal to the negative side of this uh, waveform. So excellent news, no problems. We can search uh, for this uh, waveform and see if we can replace uh, this waveform or if we can apply this waveform to a transformer. If you look at the back boost converter, we found that this back boost converter, as if it's designed to be uh, an isolated power converter. Why? Because you'll find that uh, in the middle of this converter, we have an inductor. And this inductor absolutely has the AC waveform, voltage waveform that is applied on this uh, inductor. So excellent, no problems. We can just remove this inductor and replace it with a transformer. And by this way, we can simply convert the traditional uh, back boost converter to an isolated uh, DC to DC converter or isolated back boost converter or what we call in general the flyback converter. Let's have a look at uh, the flyback converter after installation of the transformer within this uh, converter. Usually we place uh, this transistor in this side to make sure that uh, we have easier design for the gate driver. So here we can just simply uh, design uh, a gate driver that uh, gives voltage from 0 to 12 to 15 volt. For example, without taking into consideration uh, the voltage potential at this uh, point, which results in a, a more complicated uh, design for the gate driver. You will find here we replaced uh, the inductor of this transformer, of this uh, converter with a transformer. And uh, because uh, Within the DC to DC converter, we, we said that uh, we can use this transformer as a, an ideal transformer if we manage to transfer the energy from input to the output without any problem or without storing the energy with, within the core. But if we need to store the energy within the core, so we need to, for example, apply pulsating voltage at the input and then uh, you'll find that at some point we have a stored energy within the core uh, and this stored energy is defined as uh, the magnetizing inductance. So the transformer within the DC to DC converter has two kind of currents. The current number one is the current that is stored within the core or what is, uh, what is called the energy stored within the core uh, which is related to the magnetizing uh, inductance. The second types of current is the primary secondary current. If we have primary current, then definitely the current is going to the secondary and so on. So let's now try to uh, analyze uh, the circuit of the flyback converter. Let's say that uh, the switch is on. When the switch is on, you will find that uh, the input uh, DC supply will start charging the transformer. Now you will ask, will this current uh, move to the magnetizing inductance or those to the primary of the transformer? I would say it will move to both sides of this circuit both the magnetizing inductance and the uh, primary or uh, the primary of the transformer now since the primary current is going to the dot so definitely the secondary current is going outside of the dot and then this block d will be off the primary current also will be off will be zero then when the switch is conducting we have only one current which is the current that is stored inside the core 
or the magnetizing inductance current. At this moment, uh, the voltage Vm, which is uh, the voltage across uh, the inductor, is equal to the input voltage, V input, and uh, you can say that the output current uh, will be equal to the capacitor current. So here we can say that uh, IC of T, which is uh, the current inside the capacitor, is equal to V out over R, which is the output resistance. And the input current, uh, I input, is equal to the uh, magnetizing inductance current. So this is the case when the switch is conducting uh, nothing on the output, nothing on the secondary of the uh, transformer, the whole current uh, within the primary, within the magnetizing inductance. And if we assume that uh, at the first cycle we have current on the output, then this current will be equal to the capacitor current. Now when the switch is off, you'll find that the input is open circuit, there is no current coming from the, uh, from the source, uh, there is current already stored uh, within the inductor, within the uh, core, and let's say this current is IM, is moving in this direction, will keep moving in the same direction, the flux will keep moving in the same direction, but because there is no input source, so this flux will be decreasing, the energy will be uh, collapsed, let's say it will be collapsed. And then uh, once this current is decreased, so all the polarities, all the current directions within the transformer, the ideal transformer will be reversed as if we have this inductor is moving in this direction and going outside of the dot. So the current will be coming inside the dot in this side on the secondary side and then the current will be moving in this uh, direction now the secondary current is related only to the uh, magnetizing inductance current and not to the primary current because we have no current coming from the source this switch is off so this current uh, would, uh, will be equal to the magnetizing inductance current im times uh, the tens ratio n1 over n2 and the voltage uh, on the secondary V2 is equal to minus V output because the current in the opposite direction on the output uh, resistor. And we know that N1 over N2 is equal to V1 over V2. And V1 in this case is uh, Vm. V2 is uh, minus V out. So we can say uh, Vm is equal to minus N1 over N2 times V out. Uh, the capacitor current uh, IC is equal to uh, the current that's coming from the resistor, which is V out over R, plus the current that's coming from this direction, which is minus IM times N1 over N2. So IC is equal to V out over R minus IM N1 over N2. So we have the capacitor current equation. We have uh, the primary uh, voltage uh, equation. Let's draw these uh, relations. So when the transistor is uh, conducting, uh, we said that uh, Vm is equal to the input voltage which is Vm, V input and when the switch is off so this voltage is equal to uh, minus V out N1 over N2. Same thing here for the capacitor current so this is V out over R and here it's uh, V out over R minus Im N1 over N2. Let's look at the primary uh, voltage equation um, Again, because we want our converter to be balanced, we want to work in the steady state, so we can say that this area must be equal to this area, okay? So simply, uh, delta Ts times V input minus 1 minus delta times Ts times V out N1 over N2, this must be equal to zero. Simplify this equation, you will find uh, that uh, delta V input is equal to 1 minus delta times V out N1 over N2. Finally, you will find that uh, the output voltage over the input voltage, output input voltage relationship is equal to delta over 1 minus delta 
times n2 over n1 and this is the relation between and this and this is the and this is the relation between the input and the output voltage for the flyback uh, converter you can simply find that uh, this is a buck boost converter voltage relationship times the tens tens ratio for the transformer you can use uh, this uh, relationship the capacitor current relationship to find uh, the magnetizing uh, inductance uh, current. So let's uh, derive this uh, from uh, this figure. So we can say that uh, delta V out over R plus one minus delta times V out over R minus I M times N one over N two must be equal to zero. And from this equation, we can say that I M is equal to n2 over n1 times v out over 1 minus delta times r and this is the uh, dc component of the magnetizing inductance the advantage of the flyback converter is that it needs a small number of components uh, to build and also it's widely used in low and high power uh, applications uh, since it provides uh, isolation also you'll find that uh, uh, it can be arranged to provide multiple outputs by adding additional secondary windings the disadvantage of this converter is the small magnetizing inductance because the input has uh, a discontinuous input current in this case uh, the air gap core uh, transformer is a good solution uh, and increasing the number of winding turns uh, will increase uh, the magnetizing inductance as well uh, this is everything for this uh, lecture i hope that you enjoyed uh, this lecture i'll see you next time